health organizations around the world are, of course, working hard to try and come up with a vaccine in the fight against COVID-19. And a lot of that work is being done right here in our own backyard at the campus of the University of Saskatchewan's Vaccine and Infectious Diseases Organization. Very happy to be joined by Dr. Volker Geertz. Dr. Geertz, thank you so much for taking a few minutes uh, to chat with us during what I know is a very busy time for you. Can we start off talking at the basic level in terms that people might be able to understand, what is the process for for coming up with the vaccine uh, in something like uh, COVID-19? Well, thanks for having me and thanks for your interest. So the process is really starting in the lab in what we call the preclinical phase. So we're making in the lab a prototype vaccine. And then the next uh, step in the, in the development phase is to test it in animals. And we're using a ferret model for that, as well as a hamster model, two animal models that um, somewhat simulate the disease in humans. And so we can use them now to test it, the vaccine. Following that, um, there will be a period in which we assess the safety of the vaccine, and that is very, very important. And before it goes into humans, we want to make sure that what we develop is, is safe. And then um, past that comes a phase in which we're testing it in humans, first for the safety again, and then for how well it works, we call it efficacy. Excellent. And so once you get through all of those testing phases, is there an idea, assuming all goes well, and obviously there's a lot of hurdles to overcome, when uh, when we might actually see a vaccine potentially developed? Yeah, of course, that's the question that everybody wants to know. <laughs> um, we're thinking that um, our vaccine will be ready in the same timelines as many of the other vaccines out there right now, so between 12 to 18 months in total. So we're thinking we'll have something um, ready early next year to mid of next year. And as we mentioned, there are different organizations around the world, obviously, looking at this, working on this. Is there a certain amount of collaboration between these organizations, or are you kind of taking it from different angles? How, how is that relationship? Yeah, so in my mind, this is really unprecedented. Uh, the World Health Organization is really taking the lead on this, and they, they are organizing what they call expert groups, um, meetings in which essentially the Globally, the leading organizations are getting together. And interestingly, that includes also the big vaccine manufacturers. And people are openly sharing the results from their studies, sharing the information. Um, overall, really um, trying to accelerate the development, the global development as much as possible. And obviously, this is not a situation anyone wants to be in, living in a, in a, in a state of, of pandemic right across the world. What's it like to be at the forefront of something like this, where this is obviously, this is the issue that everyone in the world has in their mind. What's it like uh, being am among the leaders in, in trying to find the, the, the vaccine for this? Yeah, so I, this is really what this organization is all about. This is the reason why we're here. And, um, you know, a country like Canada needs to have an organization like ours to be able to quickly respond to these emerging diseases when they arise, and then within a very short period of time to come up with a solution for it and develop it. Um, you know, our scientists are excited to be part of this. We have reallocated resources internally, and much of our core current focus is really on the COVID-19 research. Um, everybody is excited to be part of this, and and, you know, especially if you work on something that globally is so important and people urgently need, there's a high level of motivation and, and enthusiasm that comes to play now. And another way that you're looking to help in the battle against COVID-19, you're actually developing a process by which the masks that the frontline workers are using can actually be sanitized and, and reused, which would, of course, be fantastic as we're talking about mask shortages around the world. Do you mind giving a bit of an update on that? Yeah, so what we're doing there is we have um, formed a process um, through an agreement with the Saskatchewan Health Authority. Um, we are now decontaminating or sterilizing their masks. So these are the N95 masks that they're collecting in the hospitals, plus some other PPE, face shields, and so on. They are being collected over there, inspected for um, soiling and integrity, and then they're being shipped over here. And here at Ido Intervac, we're using a process called vaporous um, hydrogen peroxide, or VHP, 
And that is a process that we use to decontaminate every equipment we have in the building, rooms and so on. It's a very um, mild way of um, decontaminating these masks and so it, it doesn't really affect their integrity. It's a process that we do all the time, that we do routinely. And um, we are now doing this in partnership with the um, health um, authority. And so uh, about seven, eight, nine thousand masks are being sterilized every week and they're being shipped back to the to the Saskatchewan Health Authority for use then in the hospitals again. That's fantastic. I wonder, are there any messages that you'd like to send out to people who might be watching? Because, of course, the thing that we hear so often is that the best way until we get a vaccine, until we find some way to defeat COVID, is for individuals to take action. Is there anything you'd like to say in terms of what people watching should be doing to keep themselves and other people safe? Well, I think we all realize it's a it's a big challenge on people's lives and, and really... Um, you know, as a father of three children, it's it's a big challenge for everyone. But I think it's very important that we keep um, following the policy, uh, the public policy guidelines and the public health um, guidelines. You know, social distancing is probably the most effective thing we can do at the moment. Um, while the weather is turning nicer, you know, everybody wants to go out. And I think that's a great thing to do. But, but when we do it, I think it's still important that um, when we come in contact with other people, we wash our hands, we follow the guidelines, um, and, and soon we'll have a vaccine for everyone. Well, Dr. Geertz, it's uh, pretty impressive the work that you're doing there at Vito at the campus of the University of Saskatchewan. We certainly wish you luck and, and hope that all goes well in terms of your research on the uh, sanitizing of masks and, of course, especially the vaccine. And, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.